This video is going to look at integration by trigonometric substitution. It'll be a complete guide, and by the end of this video, you'll be able to completely understand what this slide means. So how do you integrate functions like this, sum with powers or mixed trigonometric functions? So let's have a look at our first case. Mixed trig functions with powers. So you should definitely familiarize yourself with these trigon trigonomic identities. Um, if you're having trouble remembering them, the Pythagorean identity is you know, something which is ingrained to you since primary school, so you should be okay with that. But these ones may be a bit difficult to remember and if you have a look at the cross here, cos kind of sounds like cross, so you can remember that the half angle identity for cos has a plus sign, and sine has an i in it, which sort of looks similar to the negative sign in that half angle identity. So which trig identity do we use and when? So we actually use the Pythagorean identity when we're dealing with odd powers, and then the half angle formula is when we're dealing with even powers. So the odd case. If we have an odd power trigonometric function, we can make it an even power by taking out one of its multiples. So for example, if we have cos to the third power, we can split up to cos squared times cos x. And we'll see why this will be advantageous in a moment. We can then use our Pythagorean identity to reduce such even trigonometric function to a function of sine or cosine. So we can substitute in cos squared equals one minus sine squared into here. We can then substitute u for the function which appears the most and cancel out the multiple drew out from the odd power from our function of dx. So you'll see what I mean. So let's evaluate this integral. It's got odd powers, so we're going to need to use our Pythagorean identity. So the first step that we need to do is recognize that sine x is the most reoccurring trig function. So a change of variable will let u equal to sine x, differentiate it as cos x, and our dx is just du over cos x. Next, we want to split cos x because it's, uh, it's not the most reoccurring, and then put u in. So sine 5x, we leave that alone because we're, we're letting u equal to sine x, and then we multiply by cos squared x times cos x, and as you can see, our cos squared x, we use the Pythagorean identity here as 1 minus sine squared x, and our sine x is just u, so it's 1 minus u squared. And this simplifies down to u to the 5 minus u to the 7 times cos x. Very nice. Now, remember to change the limits. This is something, this is a mistake I do and I'm sure a lot of other people do. Um, so yeah, put it in this format and indicate which limit is which. So this is the lower limit and this is the upper limit. Then you piece it all together. You put in the limits you found, you put in the change of variable, and as you can see the cos x cancels out, which is lovely. And in this case, you can switch the limits if you want to. So if you remember, if you take the negative of an integral, um, it will become a positive integral if you switch the limits around. So as you can see, the negative is down here and the one is up there. Um, and this is now positive u7 minus u to the five. You don't have to, but that's what, that's what I would prefer to do. So then you evaluate it and you find out that the area under this curve for the specified interval is just zero. So this is uh, all the working out that I did. Feel free to copy it down and practice as many times as you want. So now let's have a look at the even case. So we had a look at the odd case. Now, when do we use the even case? We use the half angle formula to completely get rid of all of the powers. So there's no substitution involved. There's no change of variables involved. And you may have to apply the half angle formula more than once. So evaluate the following integral, sine squared x. So this is why we can't do a change of variables. So if we let u equal to sine x, what would happen is, is that we've got a mixture of variables. We've got u and we also have x. And there's nothing to cancel out our x term. So this is why we don't do change of variables here. So instead we use our half angle formula. And if you remember to how I, the tip I gave for remembering this is that i sort of looks like the negative sign. So you remember it as a half times one minus cos two x which is quite nice. And remember that this 2x is, if you have 4x or something else in there, you multiply that by 2. So all you have to do now to evaluate it is to take the constant out and make things easier, and then evaluate 1 minus cos 2x, and don't forget the plus c because it's indefinite, and there you go, 
that's it. And there's all the working out, and yeah, don't forget that plus C. It has, uh, it has taken many people's grades, so don't forget the plus C. So let's try another one. The sine squared X wasn't too bad. But what about sine squared X times cos squared X? Now what do we do? So this one has a nice trick to it. So if you do have a question in this form, you can just use the difference of two squares. So you use sine squared X, uh, the half angle formula for both of the trig identities, and you multiply them. And in this case, you can actually yeah use the difference of two squares and it cancels out really beautifully. And because you do have an even power here, you have to apply the half angle formula again, which is fine, it's not too bad. And there you go. It's pretty straightforward. Well done. Don't forget the plus C. And this is all the working out for the question. Pause it, try it again if you want to. So far, we know how to integrate even an odd power trigonometric functions, but what about combined trigonometric functions with no power? What do we do then? So how do we integrate the following functions? So we need to use the product identities. So again, a handy trick for remembering these ones, it does save time on an exam, is that yes, sine x, sine y will have the negative in it, and the cos x, cos y, it sounds like cross, so it'll have the cross in the middle. Um, but these two both have uh, cos in their product identities. But if you find a mixed one, such as sine x, cos y, it has sine. This is the only one that has sine in the product identity formula. So let's try and evaluate the following integral. Sine 2x times cos x over the interval of 0 to pi. So the first thing you want to do is recognize which identity formula you're using, and it's sine cos, so it's the only one that has the sine in the identity formula. So you evaluate it, and yeah, it's um, not as complicated as the other ones, so after you've put it in, you've pretty much got it in a nice and simple form, and you can just evaluate from there. And that's it. That's all you need to do for those types. Uh, there's not, not much need to run through the other two product identities, because it's essentially the same process. So now you can integrate any trigon trigonometric function, anything with sine, or cos, or tan. You can do it now, which is, I think, quite an achievement, so well done. So now remember I showed you this slide at the beginning, you should be able to understand what it means. So if you've got any odd powered functions, um, trigonometric functions, use the Pythagorean identity. If you have any even ones, use the half angles and you apply it as many times as you can until there's no powers anymore. If you have a mixed trigonometric function, just apply these product identities and you're well on your way to doing well on your test. So the next video will be on integration by inverse trigonometric substitution.